If now isn't the time for reading a cozy romantic story, I don't know when is. Hi, welcome, come on in. My name is Aoife and because we are in the week leading up to Christmas right now, I'm going to share with you some really cozy and really romantic Christmas stories that I think you should definitely put on your TBR this week. I've got a couple of them to go through here. Some of them I have read before and some of them I have just heard that they are fantastic books. Let's take a look at what they are. So first on the list is Stuck on You by Portia McIntosh. I read this at the end of November and I completely fell in love with it. So it's about Sadie who is the PA to a very busy art director in London and over Christmas she goes back to her parents home place and for some reason her boss comes with her and they start getting a little bit closer while they're there but one of my favorite things about this whole book is how the people in Hope Island celebrate Christmas and what they do in the run up to the big day. So uh, Sadie and her family go out and hand out Christmas cards and they make a kind of like a game out of it where the loser has to like pay for a pint or something else that they have to do around the house. Then you have like Dickens Day, which is probably my favorite part of the whole book and something that I actively want to take part in someday. And then on Christmas Eve, everybody goes together in their pajamas to the local cinema and watches It's a Wonderful Life, which is one of my absolute favorite Christmas films. That was probably something that cemented this as a really great Christmas book for me. And it's such a lovely story too. Next on the list is Snowflakes at Mistletoe Cottage by Katie Ginger. I read this last year in the run up to Christmas and I absolutely loved it. It was the first Katie Ginger book that I've read but it's definitely not gonna be the last of them. So this one follows Esme, who is working in London as a TV producer, but she loses her job in the run up to Christmas. Not only does she lose her job, she also loses her lovely London apartment and her relationship in like one fell swoop. So she goes back home to her hometown, which seems to be kind of like a the uh, running theme in these books. She goes back to her hometown and she finds a really dilapidated and run down cottage and decides she's going to put it back together. She's going to give it a little bit more life. That's going to give her something to focus on while she's trying to find her next step. And while she's there, she reconnects with an old crush of hers called Joe, who comes to kind of redo the cottage and do some little bits and pieces that she needs done around the place. But he is kind of hiding a secret and he's not everything that he seems to be. Next on the list is One Perfect Paris Christmas by Mandy Baggett, which I recently finished and really, really enjoyed. This one is something that you can just sink into and it will give you a little bit of an experience of Christmas in another country, which is something that I don't think a lot of us are gonna experience this year. In this one, you're following Keely, who has recently lost her sister in a car accident. And Keely is also a kidney transplant recipient. But the mother of the person who donated their kidney to Keely is living in Paris and calls Keely up and asks if she wants to come to Paris for the Christmas season so that this mother can get to know Keely and kind of see what the life of her daughter's kidney is like now, which seems like a really weird reason to get to know somebody. And also while you're in Paris, you have got Ethan who knew the donor really well. They were work colleagues and Katie and Ethan keep bumping into each other but they have absolutely no idea about the little connection that they have. It's a really really cute story and also it is filled with so many beautiful depictions of the sights and sounds and smells of Paris at Christmas time. The next book on my list is Christmas Island by Natalie Norman and I have already read Summer Island by the same author in like April, May, June of this year and I really really enjoyed it. I really love the characters which is a great story because this follows the sister of one of the characters that we met in the first book. So it's kind of like a continuation but I wouldn't necessarily say that you need to have read both books to have understood the story. So in this book we're following Holly who is the sister of Jack the chef that we've met in the first book and Holly is studying to become a doctor but her dreams are kind of falling around her at the moment. So she escapes to the island retreat that her brother has set up to kind of just reset, have a nice Christmas together and just reevaluate her life. And while she's there, she falls in love with the really, really grumpy owner of a local hotel, local like B&B &B area. 
And it's about her kind of bringing some life and some happiness to the island at Christmas time. Next on the list is The Christmas Swap by Sandy Berger. And that is one of the Christmas romances I have been looking forward to the most this year. So it follows three friends, Lucy, Jules and Chloe, who all come from different sides of the world. One of them comes from Australia, one of them is from the UK and one of them is from the US. And they're kind of feeling a little bit of um, samey samey when it comes to Christmases. So... They decide to spend Christmas in each other's places, with each other's families, with each other's friends, and just experience a whole new life. I mean, for the person who's coming to Australia, they're experiencing a whole new situation where it's going to be 25 degrees and you can go to the beach. But I feel like that's something that I have never experienced. I know a lot of people from my personal life who have moved to Australia and that's what they have at Christmas time now, so it is definitely something that I want to see how it goes. Next on the list is part of a series, but I would kind of say that you can read it as a standalone because I accidentally did. I accidentally picked up I Heart Christmas by Lindsay Kelk about five or six years ago without knowing that it was the sixth book in an already running series. I don't know if there is anywhere on this planet that sounds like a better place to spend Christmas than New York. So if you're not going to be able to do that this year, this book is the best way that you can experience it without having left your house. So we're following Angela, who has just gotten married to her husband, and life is getting a little bit more hectic, which you wouldn't really expect as Christmas ex as Christmas is about to come to you. So she's just started a new job, she is a newlywed, and her best friend Jenny has got serious baby fever. So she is dealing with all of that while also trying to have a really great Christmas away from her family at home and away from home and all of the experiences and traditions that she would be used to there. I think that this is a great book that I should read at the moment because I am also going to be having my first Christmas away from my family, my first Christmas away from home with brand new traditions, with brand new ways of doing things. So if Angela can do it, I think I can get it done too. The next book that I would recommend is kind of a curveball because it doesn't all take place at Christmas time and it doesn't all play, take place in December. But it starts at Christmas time and it starts in December and it runs through, I think, 10 years of the character's lives. So there is absolutely no reason that Christmas can't appear in it twice. And there's also no reason that you can't read it at Christmas because I did. I read it at Christmas last year and I still really enjoyed it. So the book in question is One Day in December by Josie Silver. This is an absolutely gorgeous book and I really, really enjoyed it. It is about Laurie who is taking the bus home from work one day and... Just as the bus is about to pull off, she notices this really striking, really handsome guy out the window. And she's about to write her number down on a piece of paper, or she's about to go out and like get to know him, but the bus takes off. So she doesn't see him again, but she has been talking about him to her friend Sarah for about a year. And next thing you know, Sarah is hosting a house party, Laurie turns up, and Sarah introduces her to her boyfriend Jack, who is the guy that Laurie saw outside the bus that day. So it's about all of these characters' lives, all of the ups and downs that they have in their own relationships, in other relationships with other people. It is such a really great story and I would absolutely recommend reading it. I included this one on the list, not just because I really enjoyed it, but also because it kind of harks back to an aforementioned favourite Christmas film of mine, It's a Wonderful Life. So this book is It's a Wonderful Night by Jamie Adams. This was the first of Jamie's books that I've read and it was absolutely not the last one. So in this book, you're following Georgia, who picks up the phone one night and hears a person who is really, really struggling with everything going on in life, is kind of coming to the end of their tether and is just looking for somebody that they can offload to, somebody that they can get advice from, somebody that they can talk to, basically. So she stays on the phone with them for a really long time, has a chat with them, and things start to improve. The next morning, she goes into her local coffee shop and orders a coffee from the owner, Leo, and notices that she recognizes his voice from last night. And it's kind of the story about how they are going to improve life and situations for Leo, how they're going to celebrate Christmas together when he's not feeling super festive. The last book on the list is one that I left for last because I think it is the most hyped Christmas romance of this year. I haven't read it yet. I have got a copy of it on my Kindle and it is actively waiting for Christmas week for me. This is In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. I have read one of their books so far and they automatically became a favorite author of mine just from that book. So I will admit I've got pretty good hype on this one too. 
So this follows Mei Lin, whose life is kind of down in the dumps at the moment. She's living with her parents, her job isn't going super well, and this is the last Christmas that she and her family are going to spend at their lodge in Utah. So she's not kind of looking forward to Christmas, but she's gonna take the best out of it that she can. But she has an accident, everything fades to black, and next thing she wakes up and she's back on a plane to Utah, She's about to experience the whole situation all over again. So this is kind of a very Groundhog Day meets Love Actually story. And I love both of those films. So I absolutely know I'm going to love this book. Those are some really gorgeous Christmas romances. Some of them are a little bit steamy. Some of them are really just really cute and fluffy. If you're looking for some Christmas romance reading this week, those will absolutely get you through. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have new videos up every week. Now, get on out of here. Oh, 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 oh,